So welcome to Process Talks. Um, this is, a, as I said, a new initiative and series uh, we're doing here that is uh, about the process of, you know, photographic process, the creative process, uh, your mental health process, all these different processes uh, that we go through um, with therapeutic photogra photography, with uh, everything we do here at The One Project. So like I said, it's uh, the goal with this is really to connect more as a community, to highlight, uh, you know, larger bodies of work or specific stories um, that members are sharing in the community. We're also hoping to have, um, bring in some experts and other people who um, have done some really interesting work and talk with them about all these different processes. So for the first one, I kept it easy on myself and I'm going to interview myself <laughs> for this one and uh, go over, uh, some of you might have heard about some of this, I'm gonna talk about it um, again, the sort of first series that led to the one project, um, but dive into um, kind of the, the core pieces that came out of that uh, for myself. And then I'll talk about some of my current processes as well. So part of this also is hopefully to talk about work that you've done in the past, um, kind of what you're working through right now, um, and maybe what you're gonna be working through uh, later on. So what have I processed in the past? So as I said, I'm gonna talk about um, that first series of photos that I did that uh, led to the one project. So this photo here uh, is titled Lonely Surfer. It was the first uh, photo that I took that, um, that started the whole project, that started this whole series. And, uh, it was really just a photo that um, was was very intuitive. I just the scene caught my eye, and I saw it kind of uh, happening in front of me. Took this photo and felt just compelled to do something more with it. It felt that there was kind of a story there, and as I created that, it just sparked other ideas for other stories and photos um, that eventually led to this larger series. And at the time, I didn't really know what I was trying to say with it. Uh, just something that kind of uh, hit my gut and, and felt like a moment that needed to be captured. At that time, I remember I was really proud of it. It was kind of one of my uh, favorite photos I had taken uh, to date. Um, this is almost now 10 years ago, uh, coming towards the anniversary uh, of the one project, the end of this year. And so I took this photo and um, as I said, created this story and, and really started to think through um, really going back to that question, like what am I processing right now? I wasn't aware of that. It's, you know, these are new ways that I'm kind of looking at it um, with hindsight, but this is how I also kind of look at my work um, now that I'm doing, um, uh, you know, currently. Um, so at the time it was really the way that I worded it and, and the stories that I was told were kind of more around loneliness. Um, but when I broke that down and kind of went through and, and um, created these more stories and created this project, I realized that it was more so around depression and anxiety. And that's what kind of sparked this uh, larger series and this larger project. Um, uh, that is, the series is one and the, the one project as a whole. So that was the first photo. And then this was another photo that I took uh, in the series. And this was kind of um, a difficult photo to take because if, if you're not familiar, this is a kind of famous public art piece in, in New York. And there's always people every second kind of going back and forth trying to take photos. And I was trying to get uh, just this one man sitting on the, the left side of the statue or the, the piece of art. And... Um, Again, at that time, I didn't really know what I was trying to say with this. It was just something that caught my eye, but it grew into this uh, story called Love Loneliness, uh, Love Slash Loneliness. And skip ahead uh, a few years after I had kind of created this larger project. Um, this is where continuing to do the work uh, of these kind of therapeutic photography techniques um, of just, again, processing um, even once the photo was created and the story was done and told, and I've had talked about it uh, a lot, had done some talks 
on it. Um, it wasn't until uh, this one exhibition that we had uh, someone pointed out that there was, if you look at the, the right side, there's a little yellow circle. And uh, there was this other person that I didn't really, never had seen uh, that they were there. Um, so I had the focus that I had and, and kind of the goal that I was going for with this um, photograph was to capture the one person on the left side, again, to convey this, this sense of loneliness. Um, and it was only through someone else's perspective um, that they kind of pointed out to me that there was another person in the, in the frame in this photo. And so this kind of uh, exemplifies how our different perspectives, you know, we see things differently. We different um, pieces of the photo stand out to us, um, but also kind of how, again, what I was going through at that time, what I was trying to say, um, kind of put my perspective towards not seeing that person. And then my perspective shifted quite a bit after uh, that was pointed out to me. And that actually became a theme in, uh, there was another person in the previous photo uh, that was kind of hidden along the shoreline. And this became kind of a theme of these photos where I was searching for these um, solitary figures in, in these scenes. Um, and yet there was always these, these other people uh, kind of hidden within them. And it became kind of... Uh, representative and, and a sort of a metaphor for my own life of how there were people in my life at that time. I felt, you know, alone and I was struggling with these issues and yet I had people who were there to support me. Um, so it was a really interesting process that I went through with this whole series. Um, and this was kind of the, the main standout piece of it all. I'm just seeing there's, Kathy's mentioning how one is black and the other is white. Yeah, it's uh, there was some interesting contrast between uh, all of it. Okay, so these are three other uh, photos from the series, as as you can see, um, the same sort of uh, same process, same uh, goal of creating these these images with the solitary figures. Um, these were all created with, um, yeah, all three of these were friends of mine who kind of stood in. So I was really, at that time, I was really telling obviously my story and trying to express these things, but it was only through, um, it was through friends uh, who were able to kind of work with me and collaborate to create these stories because I wasn't yet in a place, this was very kind of early on in my process. Uh, and as we talk about in, in the courses and everything and with the techniques, self-portraits are are the hardest it's the obviously the most personal um technically they can be the hardest too of trying to you know deal with remotes or all these different things it's a lot easier obviously if you have help or if you have someone who can kind of stand in for you and so these were three other um images that i created that were in that initial series and for that initial process of of loneliness but as i said if you kind of dug a little bit deeper over time as I continued to process um, with those photos and those stories and just my own journey with my mental health. Um, that's where I uncovered that it was more about uh, depression, anxiety, and, you know, it still is about loneliness and how that connects to it. But um, it was really about these deeper issues that I was going through and not really um, aware of at that time. So that was the kind of initial process the, of that first uh, series of photos. Uh, so I also wanted to keep this talk kind of relevant to the times that we're in, because uh, they're quite challenging, I think, for, for many of us, uh, especially those who you know, already struggle with their mental health. So I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of uh, my process now. A big part of my process is actually uh, with my music as well, but I have um, been doing kind of a new few different uh, ideas around mental health and around uh, using my photos to kind of express and, and talk about what's, uh, what's been going on. Um, I think there are some other, uh, we've seen some really amazing stories actually of um, from the community about, you know, the pandemic and the shutdown and how, this uh, quarantine or isolation um, can affect you and how it's uh, 
but you know what we wanted to uh, really focus on is the fact that you know despite even if you're not able to get outside or um, if you can and you know respect those the social distancing and all these things uh, you still have the ability to be creative to kind of express that and just let it out and um, take it step by step so one of the um, big pieces uh, of, of my kind of current processing is uh, being on medication. So that's something that hasn't, I haven't had to deal with before. Um, it kind of came out of massive stressors that included the, uh, the shutdown and everything. And so I've been uh, various photos and um, series that have been kind of helping me work through that and process um, this new kind of stage. And so that's, part of what I'm processing, but uh, how exactly is through uh, this new series of images. So this is actually, um, I had this sort of concept in my head um, and it ties in actually to my music. Um, the two are kind of the same. So the, the concept overall is uh, integration for the, the album that I'm creating and everything and had this idea of using these prisms um, you can see I have a few different of these prisms to create these portraits that uh, in a way kind of um, created all these little glimpses of, of light and refraction and different pieces of myself um, and so these are all the different photos um, currently that I'm working on and a lot of them are just kind of uh, I'll say teasers for now um, hoping to be able to get into more of a studio space or or um, work with my my DSLR to create some images. Um, but this is the current process. And as I said before, the self-portraits are, are a lot uh, more difficult. We'll see a lot of times in the community, um, you know, you can use images of nature. You can use images of... Um, what you see on the street, all these, you can have objects that represent yourself, but um, when you get to self portraits, uh, it's much more challenging and kind of confronting. Um, and that's what uh, I was kind of looking for right now. I think that was the next stage for me. So this is uh, kind of part of my current process. And I think this also for me represents a little bit of um, I've, I've seen a lot of people talking about, you know, if you're stuck in quarantine, if you're stuck in isolation, in a way you're kind of stuck with yourself <laughs> and you have to, uh, learn to, uh, you know, live with yourself and, and, and be comfortable with that and be comfortable in your own space. Um, and I've always, yeah, I work from home. I've always kind of been, uh, on that path a little bit, but it's different when you're kind of forced, uh, much more. So, I think that might also be part of the process. Um, this part I don't have, uh, well, I didn't have any of this scripted out, but um, this is, you know, the current process. So it's still being uh, worked through and kind of understood. It's not kind of a clear picture as, as before, like I said, with the, um, the previous series, it was, uh, took years really for those insights to come. And it was really through talking with, like doing this, you know, talking about it, putting it out there, um, having other people's perspectives uh, on the photos, on the series. That was how um, all of the insights developed. So a lot of the times, you know, obviously um, the insights come from within. It comes from your own introspection, uh, your own kind of process of, of working through the photos, creating these stories and all that. But um, there's lots of opportunities like with that uh, love photo to have other people to contribute to that and kind of help you in your own process. So um, I went through a little bit quick, <laughs> so we'll probably have more time for um, questions here. But um, yeah, so if you can share some questions in the chat, uh, or you can also raise your hand and we can um, get you to uh, go through the questions and everything. Uh, Kathy is also here to help us out with that. Um, 
but I can also keep chatting a little bit about these photos as well. Um, so another piece of this is just, as I said, um, part of it is uh, with in, in relation to the, the music piece that's uh, kind of partnered with this as well is um, looking at all these kind of pieces of, of my identity and uh, who I am and everything. So I was trying to find really a, a way to, to showcase that and visualize that. Um, and that's part of really, you know, how thera therapeutic photography works is, you know, being able to create these kind of visual metaphors that um, explain a little bit more about what you're trying to communicate. And you can do that without really, um, without words, you don't have to say it explicitly, you can um, say it through the photo. And if that's what people get from it, then, then great, if that's the, your intention. Um, but you can also, you know, everyone looking at these photos can have different meanings um, that might actually be interesting as well. If you seeing these photos, what, what's maybe like one word that comes to mind, if you could share it in the chat, that would be interesting. Um, just to speak to, I guess, a little bit more on, um, what we hope to do with this series. This one's a little different, like I said, just cause I'm interviewing myself a little bit. Um, but we're wanting to provide that opportunity, same uh, as I was talking about before, in terms of uh, that love photo and having someone else's perspective. Um, if you have work that you're really passionate about or a series that you've created that you're open to having um, shared and kind of reviewed in a way, um, I'll be kind of going through and deconstructing my perspective on, on the photo and the story and everything. And then the hope is that uh, um, through that, you know, we'll also get, you know, all the people who are on the, the webinar will be able to share their perspectives as well. And so that can help you in your process, um, similar to, to what happened with that love photo. So let's see. Sylvia says, when I see the pictures, the word that comes to my mind is deconstruction. Interesting. So that's like, in a way, the opposite of um the uh deconstruction in, in my mind is kind of like an antonym i guess of uh integration and uh that's interesting because uh in a way that that was kind of part of the process um that i saw it as is kind of like a deconstruction that has to happen first to for the integration to happen um so thanks for sharing that that's really interesting uh douglas says multifaceted is the word that springs to mind. Yeah, interesting. Um, I think, again, that's a, I would say part of how I see it and a part of the process in, in my eyes as well is, like I was mentioning, all these different pieces uh, of myself um, coming deconstructed and then coming back uh, into, into one and uh, as a whole again. Um, let's see. Do we have any other perspectives we can share in the chat. Uh, Dante says shattered in different angles. Interesting part that goes along kind of with, um, with uh, deconstruction. Faith says sense of motion change is not static. Okay. Do you, I'm curious if that sense of motion comes from kind of all the different lines. Uh, but I understand definitely the change. Yeah, and it's interesting sometimes uh, through these, um, if I go back actually to, to this photo, or even one of these, um, the, the one on the left, for example, um, the title of it was Virtual Reality. And... Um, in my eyes, that was very clear. And I think in some subtle ways, we, we kind of made that uh, clear a little bit, but it's, uh, this one's obviously a lot more um, open to interpretation. We can maybe do that same um, process here if you wanna share for that black and white photo, uh, how you see it. But it's always interesting to, to hear people's perspectives on your work when you have 
especially if you have kind of a clear intention and a clear message uh, around it, that can uh, just be really interesting to see the different perspectives and how, you know, we all have different experiences. We all have different um, beliefs and values sometimes. And, um, and that's okay. But that's what informs kind of how we see things and, and what we get out of these different uh, images and everything. So Dante says, uh, end of the tunnel. Interesting. Okay. Like that's new. Some of these I've been, you know, doing this process, uh, you know, having people answer these questions uh, for years now. And uh, there's always new, new perspectives, uh, new answers. So that's really interesting. Uh, maybe the other piece I'll say on this too, um, talking about kind of these different processes across the board or uh, in the big picture is that, um, as I was saying before, uh, basically all of the photos that I have, and there's another series actually that I have um, in mind that's more, uh, I need like studio time to be able to create these images are all self portraits as well. And um, there were, I think no self portraits in the initial series. Um, and again, it's just interesting to note these things sometimes, or to be able to keep these things in mind of, you know, how, how you're expressing around these issues that you're going through or, you know, these wins and, and good times and everything um, you can share around both of them, but uh, seeing kind of that, that progress sometimes if you look back at work that you've done in the past what were some um similarities across that where they may be a lot more black and white and now you're working with a lot more color or um you know are you looking at uh more for like for right now maybe people um more photos of around the house or maybe it's that you're photographing more uh you know if you go out on daily walks and that type of thing more nature because you appreciate it more because you're uh, maybe it's stuck inside a little bit more. Um, it's interesting to look at these larger patterns across the board with, with your work. Okay. So uh, if we don't have any more perspectives on this one, then we can hop to some more uh, questions. If you want to share them in the, the chat um, and they can be about the, original series about the new work. Uh, it can be about therapeutic photography in general. Uh, so Kathy asks, have I ever gone back to the Lonely Surfer photo? And let me just go back to it. Uh, have you ever gone back to the Lonely Surfer photo and edited it to reflect your new perspective of what you're going through? Interesting. Can you elaborate on that i think i understand what you mean but is it um do you mean to highlight the second person within it and i can point out i'm not sure if you guys can see my cursor here but um if you look at the the surfer there's just about an inch away from him uh there's a head right within the um within the coastline there it's very, very subtle. It's hard to see. I had to, I did, I guess, have to edit it a little bit to make that um, pop a little bit more with, um, for, for some presentations. Um, but one, I guess I'll say, uh, to answer your question, I think this new series, not the one that I showed you, it's the one I haven't really started on, I have had, had uh, time for yet, um, is in a parallel to the lonely surfer a little bit, there's a few stories that um, are self portraits and, and speak kind of in, in parallel to that. Um, and again, I think that happens. It's interesting sometimes how we do that and we might um, create something along those lines without realizing it. It can be done um, intentionally, but it can also happen kind of uh, if you want to say like serendip serendipitously, or um, unconsciously, and you'll have these patterns across um, your work and everything. Uh, she says, for example, sometimes when I take a photo, I may choose to go with a more moodier vibe to reflect the pressure and anxiety I'm going through. 
But then when I look back at the photos and I'm in a much better place, I may actually edit it to add more vibrancy and light. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, no, I haven't done that um, for any of the kind of photos. That might be an interesting process to go through. Um, I know we've talked about that in, in the community before with people. Um, and sometimes people show before and after and we talk about how um, the editing process itself is a big part of therapeutic photography. So you, there's a lot of times, like I said before, uh, and this would be an example of black and white uh, photography um, kind of being very representat representative of um, depression or specifically depression. Um, kind of this lack of, of vibrancy and color, like you stated, um, and so we'll see sometimes that people will will make those distinct choices in editing. But um, yeah, you're talking about kind of going back afterwards. Um, I think that's maybe if I skip ahead to there, there were a lot of kind of dull color tones in most of the the um, images that I created. They weren't very vibrant and and everything in the original series. And then if we go like <laughs> that's, these are pretty much as, as vibrant as you can get. Um, and then part of what I've been uh, intentionally trying to capture with these images is these little, you'll see the little kind of refraction of light, the little rainbow effects. Um, so again, the, that's, um, it's done intentionally here to capture those pieces, but it's not, kind of consciously thought of the way that I just stated it, like that the previous series was um, more dull and, and kind of um, lacked color. And now I'm kind of looking to, to capture more of that. Um, but it is something that is there and it's, it's kind of the meaning that you can construct afterwards or the, what you can find as you're kind of processing and looking through, uh, especially the, the bigger picture of, of your work across the, the board. So like I said, if you have um, questions, just type it in the chat there and we'll get to them. And just checking the time. Um, what else can I say here? Uh, I guess the other piece of again, between these two series is, uh, as I was talking before, the um, using kind of friends and, and working collabor collaboratively um, with them on these stories. It was really interesting um, years ago where, I w again, I, I didn't really know and I wasn't really super clear um, of what I was trying to say as I was creating the photos necessarily. And so there was a bit of a conversation and it, and it opened and kind of sparked the ability to, um, to have these conversations around mental health uh, between us. Um, and that's, that's kind of like the middle step of, you know, you can take photos kind of like street photography or just capture these found scenes um, uh, you know, wh where you are, if you're out for a walk and the, these types of things. Um, it's a much different process to be doing it kind of on your own and, and taking these self portraits. Um, just had another question come in. That's why I got a little distracted there. Uh, so faith says, does the red represent joy or stress or neither? Uh, do you mean for these ones or for this one, uh, faith, the hand or the face, both does red represent joy or stress or neither? Um, that's something I haven't really thought about. Uh, usually I just have my red lights on because it helps me go to sleep at night. <laughs> so, uh, so there wasn't really a, an intention with that necessarily in, in that regard. Um, I would, yeah, I think it's just more, I mean, for my intention with it, I, I would say is more just, uh, the vibrancy, the, um, it's a lot more, uh, grabs your attention more. Um, and also just creates, uh, 
a much different vibe than like if you just look at the the red one here versus um, below um, the red kind of just pops out a lot more so it's I think it's trying to be more bold in what it's saying and, and how it looks if that makes sense Uh, so yeah, some questions from Joe. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure where you're, um, you can just reach out with, uh, or I'll reach out after, um, so we can talk a little bit, but he's just asking about, uh, kind of healing photography using that term. Um, so I can maybe speak on that just broadly here. Um, and do, but yeah, so first, uh, so healing photography. Um, there's a few different terms that are used uh, across the board. Um, the main ones being uh, therapeutic photography and phototherapy. Um, the, it is a little bit tricky and you, you have to be careful. It's, it's different kind of uh, across different areas, but um, the majority or the way that we talk about it is essentially therapeutic photography is something that you do uh, on your own. Um, we always emphasize that it's not, you know, a replacement for professional health, uh, sorry, professional help. Um, but, uh, it's a process you can do it on your own and it's, it can be therapeutic. Um, and, and it is therapeutic. Um, that doesn't, you know, mean that you might not need other services like therapy or, or medication or what have you. It's part of your, you know, toolbox and toolkit of, of, um, what you, what you need for, to be healthy. Um, phototherapy is something that's done with professionals. It's with, you know, a therapist and it's, it's kind of guided and, um, and done in, in that context. Uh, I would say healing photography is one I haven't heard as much. I would probably, um, stick with therapeutic photography because that's kind of more of an, uh, established term. Um, and it keeps it out of the kind of gray area of, um, of making that kind of bold statement, I guess. Uh, another question Douglas asks about the red and the blue pill. Um, yeah, so let's go back here. Um, I, <laughs> I think for me it was, uh, I know that there's obviously like the uh, matrix um, reference here. And uh, that was intentional, but I don't think it was intentional in the, way that it's kind of portrayed with that, um, with the movie. Um, again, it was kind of just, uh, there were two of the boldest colors that I have with the, the lights in my, in my room, um, to be able to do that. And it's the two kind of like main primary, uh, colors. I think there was kind of like a cheeky nod to that, but it was really just, um, as I mentioned, it's, it's kind of the first time I've, um, I've had to take or, or sort of had the need to take medication uh, for my mental health. So it was this, this dichotomy, dichotomy, this yes or no kind of struggle of um, if I felt that was right for me or, or just uh, grappling with that kind of um, decision and, and stage uh, again, kind of that processing of, um, uh, of that. Um, so yeah, it wasn't um, a direct, kind of uh, uh, statement around, you know, the, how the matrix um, talks about it, but it was just kind of my, my version of that in my own way, if that makes sense. Uh, okay. So Kathy asks, uh, any tips on how to motivate ourselves or take us through the process of generating the motivation? Yeah. So, um, hmm. it's tricky sometimes. I, uh, I think with, um, finding the motivation, it's the thing about, uh, therapeutic photography and like what we do and kind of how we talk about it in the community and everything is that, um, you know, it's, it's a way to more easily let it out or express these things that you're going through. 
and it's hard sometimes if you're like, if let's say if you struggle with depression um, and it's, you know, difficult for you to get out of bed or you're really struggling, it's, it's hard for you to talk about it. Um, that can add all this extra pressure and make it a lot harder to, um, to even like take a photo or post it and, you know, take these actions. That being said, it's, uh, or like find the motivation to do those things, let's say. Um, I've kind of learned through, there are sometimes like, those are very, um, uh, I mean, they can be very difficult and large hurdles if it's something that you're not doing regularly, you haven't done before. But um, I find that usually the motivation kind of comes afterwards, uh, like you're, by doing those things, it, it helps it to make it easier the next time it kind of motivates you to, to keep doing that thing. So it's, it's a difficult process, but um, I find, or I, I would say my um, recommendation is just start as small as possible. So keep it as, you know, if I go back to the original series, it was, it wasn't me in the photos. Um, even before those photos, like before the ones that I was doing with my friends, that were kind of stage photos. I was just taking photos um, of these scenes that I saw around me. So like try and make it as, as little work as possible or as little steps and complications and just share what you're going through. So it could be as simple as like, what is your, I think we've actually had some members who like, if you can't leave bed, just take a photo of you laying in bed or your you know bed sheets or I don't know the, what you see from your bed um, and, and write a story about that. And the story can be very simple and short. Um, it could be just that you are struggling to get out of bed right now. And by doing that, it helps, um, it helps kind of make it easier to hit that next stage of maybe, you know, getting out of bed, maybe getting outside and taking some photos. Um, so I think just trying to make it as easy as possible on yourself and as um, you can make it less and less personal, uh, also makes it easier to share that first time or if you're struggling with motivation. Um, just some nice messages. That's thank you, Joe. Uh, cool. Do we have any other questions or else we can wrap up here? Um, was it a question, Dante? So Ra is asking if therapeutic photography is done by ourselves and how can we control or measure if it's how, like, how can we know if it's working or how can we know if it's effective? Um, that's an interesting question. I think um, in a way we're the old, even if it's, if you're doing photo therapy in a way, um, obviously the, the therapist is, you know, trained for that and, and, um, should be able to see that. But I think a large part of, you know, therapeutic photography and, and what we talk about at the one project is, um, is this is an introspective process. Um, you know, so it's a lot about getting more in touch with yourself and, and how you're feeling and, and what's going on. So the more that you do it, I think the more, clearer it becomes, the more comfortable you, you get with it, the, the clearer it becomes of um, the value you're getting from it, if that makes sense. So like I said, and it's, it's not necessarily a quick process. It can be in the beginning. If you're just getting started with it, you can start to see that maybe it's easier for you to talk about. Um, you can maybe see that, you know, by again, those photos that I did with uh, friends, if I go back here, like I said, this opened up conversations for my friends and I, and that was something that hadn't happened before. Um, it was really only through doing these photos that that conversation started. So I could see that that was for me. And it's, I, I think part of that, your question is just having to know or, or create what, what those measures are, what those um, milestones are so that you, um, yeah, you know, and you you can see that, um, I think it comes with time and, and hindsight, like I mentioned before. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. Um, and that's where if, um, 
you know, it is very helpful where if you're working with a professional or with a therapist, they can guide you. They can, they have their expertise. And, um, you know, if you're doing your own kind of therapeutic photography activities anyways, um, that's something that you can have that conversation with them. Um, and it, that can be helpful for, you know, their process a lot of the times. Um, Joe asked, can you speak to sharing photos on social media? Sometimes it can be problematic where I'm judging myself based on people's comments. Yeah. Um, that's a, <laughs> um, it's a good question. It's, it's a difficult, uh, I think it's a challenge for everyone. It's a challenge for me even. And, uh, I think it's part of that is just, um, part of that is like why we exist, why the one project is, is here, uh, is to provide a little bit of a different space, uh, a little bit more of a private and safe space to share these more vulnerable things. So I think, um, part of it is, is, um, curating a little bit of like what you share and where. So, uh, you know, on our platform, you might share, more of an in-depth story or only share, you know, if you're sharing kind of more personal and um, uh, vulnerable stories, you might only share that uh, on our platform. And, and you could use, we've seen members sometimes who use the same photo and share with a different caption on Instagram, for example, um, because it's just kind of a different context of, of the community there. So um, I'm not sure that I have, <laughs> tips for dealing with sort of the self judgment or, or, um, kind of the anxiety or everything that goes with, um, sharing on social media. I mean, myself, I, um, cut down quite a bit. I'm only using Instagram now pretty much. Um, and got off like Twitter and Facebook and everything. And I'm selective, um, more of what I'm sharing. Um, based on that, I, I understand that, like, I have that all over again, almost with my music and, and what I'm sharing or how I'm sharing it now. Um, cause I'm kind of like earlier on in those stages, but, um, I think maybe even just if you're speaking to other people's comments and, and how you take that, um, you know, it could be just, again, going back to thinking that that's their, that's their perspective that doesn't have to change or affect your perspective on, on your work, if you're happy with it, or if you have a different kind of, um, way of looking at it. So hopefully that helps, but I, uh, I'm by no means an expert to dealing with our crazy social media world now. <laughs> um, cool. So we'll have a few more, uh, questions if there are any, and then we'll wrap up here. I think that I got to all of them so far. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait, yeah, um, Dante, I'm not sure if that was a question. Um, are you asking kind of uh, if I have tips for working on a project I haven't done before? Uh, like getting started basically? Um, if that's what you meant, then let's see here. So yeah, working on a project you haven't done before, um, and getting started. Well, yeah, that's like, I was just saying kind of with, yeah. Okay. So tips for motivating. <laughs> so similar to, um, the question before, again, I think it's just like, I'm, I'm struggling with that quite a bit with my music right now. And it's because I'm less, experience with it. I have less confidence. I'm doing a lot of learning around it. Um, and it's, it's tough to have motivation. I, I really kind of believe there's this theory that I heard out there of, of it's kind of like earned almost motivation that like through these actions and through, um, you know, putting in the work and, and just doing a step at a time and, and noticing kind of like we were talking about with the, uh, the measuring the progress or the effectiveness of it. If you, you know, if let's say your first photo, if you go back to the first photo here, 
if I have one photo and I'm, you know, wanting to create the series, well, that's, you need to kind of celebrate and, and give yourself credit for that first, um, that first image. And then if, you know, if you can create the story from that, that's a next step and each piece will kind of motivate you through that. Um, but it's, it is difficult. It's, uh, but I, I think that through, you know, those little steps and being a little bit more like kind and compassionate with ourselves <laughs> um, and trying to, trying to limit and, and lower that voice of, of judgment um, is, is kind of the way to do that. So I'm not sure. Um, I think looking at it maybe also from w when you're trying to work on it, like, you know, in terms of the music or even these new photo series I'm working on, like I'm not looking at it from, the perspective of um, 30 photos that I have to make. If I'm always thinking about the, the huge full picture of it, then that's going to be too overwhelming and I'm going to feel like, like I can't do it or it's too much. So if I'm, if I kind of break it down into small chunks, um, then that will help to make it more manageable and less uh, overwhelming. So hopefully you can have enough motivation for just that little step uh, one step at a time. Hopefully that helps. Um, but that's a, it's a challenge for, for everyone. I think for every, um, project it's, it's, uh, um, can be difficult. Uh, so maybe have one last question here. So Ross says basically, even if it's really subjective in personal works, it still needs communal support. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Are, are you saying that, um, in order to get like the benefits out of it, you still need to share it with other people or you still need to, um, work with others? Like are you, are you asking if it's basically kind of like unable to do this solely on your own? Um, cause I would say the, but like a large part of the first, um, series was um was done on my own until i got to those those photos where i was uh, working with my friends and everything um and there's a lot that you can uncover and uh, a lot of insights that you can get from just working on this process on your own but it's again kind of that next stage uh, or it's a evolution of it when you're working with other people and you can have share it um you know whether it's like on a platform like our community or otherwise um so that's it's just another way of doing it um i think you can do it both ways and um but there's a lot of benefit from sharing it with others and having that support yeah joe mentions says sharing our work makes us vulnerable in a way but the benefits of community are a huge part of the process for me yeah and i we've seen it was for me and i've seen it like time and time again with members of the one project um it's that that uh, that process of of sharing it especially for the first time is a huge part of um their journey and their healing really and, and just getting more comfortable with talking about these things it's usually a sort of a milestone moment uh for people especially when they get support um and and everything from the community so uh, really encourage it. Don't want you to like push yourself too too much to do that. If you're not comfortable with it, you can have other again smaller steps. Um, but you can you get a lot of benefit from that as well. Okay, thank you everyone for all the awesome questions. Uh, that was really good. And let's go through and wrap up quick. So. Um, Again, thank you, everyone. Uh, if you are not on our platform uh, yet, you can sign up for free. It's uh, forever free to just join the community. You can have a safe space to see other people's stories, um, to you know share and have that space where there's less judgment, um, you know, more support and everything. Uh, you can sign up for free at theoneproject.co. It's private, and we have a lot of awesome people like all of you there. Uh, we also have some awesome new merch that, uh, you can see Kathy's wearing our hoodie. I got our hat on. Um, <laughs> uh, 
And uh, yeah, we, you can, you know, wear our mission. It's all eco-friendly and consciously done. Uh, if you know, or, you know, work with some awesome organizations who want to help out with mental health, you can also partner with us. We have some cool campaigns that we've done in the past. And uh, we have over 1800 uh, stories on our private platform so far, which is amazing. You can go and search and find lots of amazing photos and stories of um, like I've shared here. And we'll start to feature some of those members and um, their stories on these process talks in the future. Really excited to do that. And we have, uh, if you're comfortable with, you know, having that uh, process of, of sharing them openly and getting other people's perspectives, you can also uh, tag it to be featured uh, in the private platform. And we have over 300 so far on our website uh, that you can go and search and everything as well. And we already did question time. I flipped this around a little bit. So uh, thank you everyone so much for coming. Uh, really appreciate the support for the first one here and uh, really looking forward to future uh, process talks and hopefully maybe we can feature some of you. So thanks so much and uh, we'll talk to you next time.